whatever. It's the future of all vehicles, and it's even happening to tractors, John Deere tractors. They can't even diagnose their own vehicles anymore. They, they're not allowed. It's encrypted. Basically, I have a repair shop, and uh, what I do is pretty much mostly is just to repair John Deere equipment. You know, every situation now is, you know, because I don't have, you know, John Deere's service advisor uh, laptop. You know, I can't uh, connect to the equipment. I'm pretty restricted on what I can do as far as uh, the newer equipment. They encrypted the L5P in a way of which they never done before, and it'll never be it will never be hacked. The only way it will ever be tuned is if someone breaks into the headquarters of GM, steal that information basically, and or the technology itself, and then they're able to do that, which is so so highly illegal that no one will ever do that. And they couldn't make any profit from it anyway, so it's not like it's actually worth doing. And it would never allow us to tune anyway because they probably just sell it off. John Deere declined our request to visit Nebraska dealerships, but they gave us a statement regarding right to repair. Here's a quote from an EFI Live mod. And if you guys don't know what EFI Live is, it's the it's the tuner brand that I bought to be able to tune my truck. And the tunes on it were from Anarchy Diesel. But EFI Live, just think of it as basically Word, where you put everything on the inside, the code in the inside of the box, and then you load it up onto your truck. So that's what that's what people don't get. They say, "Oh, I tune with EFI Live." Well, what 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 did you what brand did you go with? What what software did you actually go with with the actual tuner? So the mod quote said, "There is no encryption as such, but there is there is no encryption as such, but there is SHA-256 signatures on every calibration segment and the OS. No external reflash bootloader permitted, so the signature validation cannot be bypassed. And top it all, the JTAG BDM is 128-bit password protected. Be prepared to accept that these may not ever be tunable. Nobody but GM could generate the SHA-256 signatures, and if someone does, they will likely be sued by GM because SHA-256 is not crackable." Uh, I went into some research about SHA-256, and basically it would take every single computer in the in the earth to be going through a billion combinations at a time because it's 202 to the 256 ones and zeros that they have to be able to get on Duramax forms I also read. The point of this thread was technically and legally E41, which is the actual model of the of the actual ECM of the L5P. E41 similar GM onboard systems are different from previous generations of vehicles. They are not going to be commercially crafted for any monetizable purpose ever, tuning, EPA deletes, or otherwise. So yeah, they're, now they do inline tuners, so I'm not going to say, oh, it's never been tuned in a way. They do inline tuners, which doesn't void your warranty and all that kind of stuff, but I'm specifically talking about actually modifying the software, being able to delete your truck. It's never going to actually happen, at least with the L5P. And you may be saying, oh, well, I mean, they're so powerful enough, 900 foot-pounds or whatever, with just an inline tuner. But what I'm trying to say is, is that if the future of these vehicles is that you're never going to be able to diagnose without going to a dealer. Just think about... John Deere tractors. They can't even diagnose the tractors anymore. It's it's getting out of hand. It's really interesting. These older tractors um, are still capable of going out and doing a day's work. And I wonder, with all the technology we have in the in the uh, newer tractors, if the same will be true of them when they're that same age. Basically, any kind of performance mod, if it throws a code, then you'll never be able to clear it for one. And for two, all these vehicles are on the air software updated. So if they sense that, well, you're, you're modifying your software or you're putting performance mods in, they could just shut down your computer of your truck and basically make it just a big paperweight. If they wanted to, they can control your truck or car or whatever with this new upgrade technology. And it's coming to the Corvette, guys. Remember that. So I, I'm basically just trucks. So that's why I'm talking about the trucks. But I'm saying this is going to be a, this is going to be for every vehicle out there. And why they're all doing this is because of the more and more autonomous features that they're having in these vehicles. They say they don't want people getting in. Realistically, they want you to be forced to go to a dealer, and never be able to fix your vehicle or diagnose or anything, and pay their high premiums. It's all for a profit. I'm assuming it's just most people don't know. I figured I'd tell you guys, and it's it's all serious. You can look this stuff up. I'm not just making it up. I've read about 74 in post. My eyes turned red because of it. it. Looked like I've been drinking or something because of how much reading I've been doing online about it. it kind of sucks, and that's why I disabled OnStar in my truck because I'm trying to freely drive this on my own. So yeah, and then it comes down to I know people in the comments are saying that I'm trying to be like other people or whatever it is, and that's realistically not the case. I'd say I have pretty unique vehicles, and especially my combination of vehicles. And I don't watch as much YouTube as you think. I do watch a few videos here and there, 
but I do know big names and stuff of that nature, and I do watch some small channels sometimes, but realistically, I, I kind of base myself off of just who I am and my friends and everything. My friends being my biggest, biggest influence and also my family. It's my interest of trucks. Sun is beaming in here. It's hot. And I still have two more prices to get for vehicles. I'm going to see what, well, for my custom builds, I'll describe them when we get there. Let's head on out because we got a long drive. Visions, contradictions, oh my gosh. Look at that thing. Holy cow. Oh, it's not even a Bronco, is it? Holy cow. Holy cow. Look at that. Lifted Cummins 2012. Just arrived here at the Ram dealer. The one that's closer to me. Oh my gosh, I am in love with that red one. Look at that. Oh, that is not a diesel though, bro. I'm just kidding, it's still cool. A lot of cool trucks here. 4500 off, no way. <laughs> Look at this view, man. That is awesome. It's cool. Ooh, look at that. So yeah, I'm not seeing too many diesels around here. That's what I was kind of scoping out as well. That's a sick Jeep for sale. Ooh, look at that. Nice. It's a nice truck. Well, that looks safe. Well, the diehard Chevy fan. Well, there's an L5P right there. So here is your Chevrolets that you wanted to see. There's a lot of them here. Got a nice view from the background, but there's some nice 1500s. Oh my gosh. Wait until you see this. <laughs> Look at that. So here's the L5P. Got both trucks. Perfect, man. Look at that. It's got the paint match bumper at the bottom. Duramax. Ooh, that is the. That is a nice interior, if I do so say so myself. <laughs> what do we got? 71,000 Duramax 66 V8 turbo diesel house and six speed auto. Look at that. 4x4 chrome rims. Definitely just arrived. I took in my build, which was a 2018 Ram 2500 Tradesman Crew Cab 4x4. There is a picture, two pictures actually, 